All right, here's our video on why acids corrode metals, right? And let's let's get our pen going here. Let's use let's try green. So, when we're talking about acids, see if this comes up. No, it doesn't come up. It's really bad. Let's get a clean page. All right. So, when we're talking about acids, and we know we should have our pen going. Let's use let's use red. So, we have our acids and we know on the other side we have our bases and we'll just talk about acids in this video so when we're talking about the ph scale right you have this thing here which scientists don't agree with some people say it's the potential of hydrogen and hydrogen is the key here which we'll talk about in a minute some people say it's the power of hydrogen so there is a little debate on what it actually stands for so we'll just say the potential of hydrogen for now. So we know that a 7 is neutral, so that's water. And by the way, water is essential for acids. Talk about that. And as it gets higher, we're talking more of the base. And as it gets lower, we are in the acid range. So that's the pH scale. Let's get a better pH scale. All right, and here's the pH scale. And we'll use green. So you can see here there's water. And over here, that is neutral. Should use a different color. Use red. Picking the wrong colors today. So we know this is neutral, a 7. And as we go this way, we're talking about a base. And as we go this way, we're talking about an acid. So, and we'll use green here to see. Here's our stomach acid, a 1. Now, it's going up by powers of 10. So you just don't see a 1 to 2 is significant. And here's our lemon with a 2. Wine with a 4. Milk with a 6 over here. And so on. So the thing about acids, and we're right over here. Acids need water. And that's really a key there. Acids need water. And without water, I'll just put this without. Without water... They don't form, they do not form hydrogen ions, and that's the key, hydrogen ions. So if you're not forming hydrogen ions, then the acid will be useless. So let's look at some acids. All right, so we're going to look at some acids, and we'll see a pattern. So let's say we had hydrogen, hydrogen chloride. So right, let's get the pen. Let's get the pen working. And we'll use purple. Why not? So we'll say hydrogen chloride. Chloride. And there's a compound there. So when you have hydrogen, well, let's make the chemical symbol here. You have hydrogen chloride, right? And remember, I said all acids need water. They need water. Without water, they're useless. And that will yield, this is going to yield a chlorine atom that is negative, a negative ion of chlorine. Plus, this is the special ingredient, H3O. And H3O, this is hydronium. Hydronium. And when we look at the pattern, we're going to see that all acids will have hydronium. And hydronium is highly reactive. Highly reactive. And another name for hydronium, some people will say protonated water. Protonated water. In other words, they have a proton. So hydronium is the key here. By the way, uh, the word acid comes from the Latin acidus. And it means sour because all acids are sour. You know, you know this by tasting a lemon and so forth. So we had hydrogen chloride and we know that we yielded hydronium. So let's look at others. All right, and for the next acid, let's use, if I get our pen working today, having a pen problem today. Let's say we have hydrogen. You may notice that hydrogen is in all acids. Hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide. Now, when we mix it with water, so we have our hydrogen sulfide, which is H2S, and we're going to add water dihydrogen monoxide right if you want the fancy name 
and it's going to yield hydrogen sulfide, which is, has a negative ion, plus, guess what this is from what I said before, hydronium. All right, so we did hydrogen chloride, hydrogen sulfide, and they have hydronium. Let's look at another. So let's use an acid we're all familiar with, citric acid. We know citric acid in lemons and oranges. So citric acid, let's make the formula for citric acid. So it has six carbon, it has eight hydrogen, it has seven oxygen, and of course with acids to be useful, they need what? What do you think? Of course, they need water. And this will yield, it's going to yield a negative ion. Because remember, acids, as you can see from the pattern, they have a negative ion plus a positive ion. So the negative ion will be what we have here, our six carbon, our eight hydrogen, our seven oxygen. But it'll be a negative ion. Plus, guess what? Hydronium, our positive ion. So the pattern is that all acids have hydronium. They all have a negative ion and a positive ion. And all acids need water to be useful. Without water, they're useless. So let's look at hydronium, because that's the key here. And I brought back the pH scale, and I'll write something over here. So if the hydronium, remember the, the key is this hydronium. If the hydronium concentration Let's just say the hydronium. The hydronium concentration increases, just to fit it in, increases, dot the I's. The pH, the pH value, guess what happens? It decreases. Does not look like a decrease there, but let's fix that. Let's fix it. Decreases. And you can see it right here. So what do you think will have more hydronium concentration? Stomach acid, stomach acid over here, or coffee? Well, stomach acid will, because remember, as the hydronium is increasing, the pH value decreases. Keep that in mind. And what's interesting about coffee being an acid is it, if we want to understand bases, and we'll talk about that in another video, bases have a bitter taste. They're bitter and slippery, like soap, where acids have a sour taste. And coffee, though, has a bitter taste. So that's interesting that it's in the acid over there. So we know that if the hydrogen concentration increases, the pH value decreases. Now, what does hydronium actually do to electrons? Let's look at that. Let's get a clean page. So basically, remember, hydrogen that loses its electron is an ion. If it, it has more protons, it has that one proton, has no electron. So basically, it's just a proton. So that hydrogen ion is just a proton. Now, in water, because in water it has a polar covalent bond, polar covalent bond, the water, oxygen becomes slightly negative. So it has a slightly negative charge which the hydrogen ion is a, is attracted to. And the attraction is so strong that it actually almost bonds with it. Right there, you can see that extra hydrogen ion. So hydronium does have three hydrogen elements, but the other one is just very attracted to the water molecule, so it comes in and joins the party. And so this hydronium ion right here, and if this was metal, the hydronium, because it has such a strong positive charge, will attract these electrons. So let's say all these electrons coming to the party, they will attract them. And that's what it's doing. So again, the, the acid now, the acid because of the hydronium, is ripping, tearing it apart. It's ripping the electrons out of the metal. I'm oversimplifying here. And metal has a lot of free electrons. And let me just clear up hydronium, because it could be a little confusing, especially if you're thinking about 
covalent bonds and what oxygen can actually hold. So in a covalent bond, remember the oxygen is sharing. It's sharing its uh, electrons with hydrogen to make water. But there's another type of bond, and we got our pen writing. It's a, it's a dative bond. And in a dative bond, they're not sharing electrons at all. So if you look at, here's the arrow. So with these, this hydrogen and that hydrogen, right, that water molecule, they're sharing electrons, even though the oxygen is sharing slightly more of it, has a slightly negative charge. But the oxygen is not sharing its electrons. It's, these are its own electrons where the hydrogen is attracted to. And this would be a hydrogen, it'd just be a proton. It's just a single proton. It has no electron, so it's attracted to those electrons. And that's where we get hydronium. And again, so this hydronium, which is as a, a very reactive charge, it's taking the electrons, it's taking, if you want to use taking, taking or ripping them, it's ripping, as I said before, the electrons, the electrons out of the metal. So it's leaving the metal exposed as protons. It's leaving that exposed. And that's where oxygen comes into the picture. So what you're having with acid, you're getting like a, a you're getting one punch with hydronium and another punch with oxygen. And so the and what happens is is the metal will release hydrogen gas. So if you ever saw these experiments, let's make a little experiment here. We put metal in acid, and here's our little acid. We'll make it green. You always see green somehow in the movies. And we put in put in some metal. And of course, we'll use purple for that. Out will come hydrogen gas. It's releasing the hydrogen gas. So again, a final review. We know that if the lower the pH scale, the more acidic it is, the more hydronium ions it has. And when exposed to metal, the hydronium ion will rip the electrons out of the metal. And the oxygen will do another attack on the metal to corrode it. And therefore you have a freeing of hydrogen gas. And that's how, that's how acid corrodes metals. And also remember that all acids need water or else they're useless.